In this day and age, living in an era of mass connectivity and amplified social media, it's pretty difficult to get any form of peace and quiet. Sure, you might get away on a camping retreat every now and then, or pack your bags and head out on a mountain trail to get away from the buzz of the city. But when was the last time you were truly isolated? Well, as populations boom and this planet gets smaller and smaller, they're few and far between, but there are still some places tucked away from the rest of the world. From the most remote island on the planet to underground cities hiding in plain sight, here's the 15 most isolated places around the world. Fort Boyard, Jock the Door. For those of you that have heard this name before, you'll know that one of the most isolated places on the planet was also the primetime headquarters of one of the most unique and thoroughly entertaining game shows of the 90s, Fort Boyard. While being the subject of the action-packed game show of the same name is actually a very real place, located slap bang in the middle of nowhere along the French Atlantic coast. Both Jack and Abby showing no fear and going for it. Believe it or not, but this stone sea fort was originally built by Napoleon Bonaparte himself, the iconic French military dictator who ravaged his way across Europe throughout the early 19th century. Located between the Ile d'Aix and the Ile de Lyon, this immense stone structure was initially envisioned as a means to offer protection over the harbor of Rochefort in France, as the area had traditionally been a weak spot in French military history. Erupting out from the sea, the structure itself stretches 223 feet in length, 101 feet wide, and towers 65 feet into the air. While the bulk of the building was built during Napoleon's reign, the first version of Fort Boyard is believed to have been built around the 1660s, planned to strengthen sea defenses in the area by order of King Louis XIV. As you may imagine, building a literal military fort in the middle of the ocean didn't exactly prove an easy task. Still. It made for a pretty good game show three centuries later. Who knew? Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Eat a court to meat. As one of the most remote Arctic territories on the planet, it's no wonder that Greenland has seen its fair share of isolated towns and villages. But even amongst them, the tiny settlement of Itakortamit stands alone. Surrounded by deep fjords, rugged mountains, and sheer walls of dramatic sea cliffs, this tiny town has proudly earned the title as the most isolated village in Greenland, with just 452 inhabitants calling this rugged Arctic landscape their home. Incredibly, it's so remote that supply ships can only reach its vicinity in July and August, and only if temperatures rise above 41 degrees Fahrenheit enough for the surrounding Greenland sea ice to melt. To the south, the village is bordered by the huge Greenland National Park, which at an area of 11,184 miles is the largest national park in the world. Its name, which literally means the place with big houses in Greenlandic, is mostly populated by the native Inuit people who live incredibly close to the land and rely on hunting and fishing as the main way to feed their families throughout the long winter months. Sure, while it may be one of the most relentless places to live on Earth, which is certainly not for the faint-hearted, the rewards are bountiful with the blessing of living among the most beautiful landscapes on planet Earth. <laughs> Palmerston Island The Cook Islands are a remarkable place in the Pacific Ocean, steeped with thousands of years of ancient history as well as being a vibrant new beacon of 21st century living. Despite being one of the remotest territories on Earth, this small island chain nation still manages to successfully maintain itself on the world's stage as one of the most beautiful places on Earth. However, as with many former colonial territories, and on an incredibly isolated island with a dwindling population, I can't blame them. It comes with a deep and complex history, and nowhere is that more apparent than in the strange, isolated community of Palmerston Atoll, an island that is home to just 62 inhabitants. Located 2,045 miles off the coast of New Zealand, the tiny island was discovered back in 1774 by Captain James Cook, a British explorer who lends his name to the remote island chain. 
For years, researchers have studied the island down to the strange fact that, for some odd reason, every member of the Palmerston Atoll speaks with a distinct British accent. Gloucestershire, to be precise. It doesn't take a scientist to figure out that Gloucestershire and the Palmerston Atoll are half a world away, but as it turned out, the sole inhabitants of the island can be traced back to a single man, William Marsters, a carpenter that settled on the island with his four wives back in 1863 and populated the atoll with 17 children and 54 grandchildren. Talk about staking a claim. <coughs> Cooper Petty. Talking of quirky settlements, let's turn your attention towards Cooper Petty, a small hidden city in Australia that has earned the title of being the quirkiest place on earth. Well, only if you ask the locals, of course. As the legend goes, back in 1915, a 14-year-old boy found a precious gemstone out in the remote South Australian outback, and from his startling discovery, the town of Cooper Petty was born, a remote and intensely hot settlement that is home to just a few thousand hardy Australians. In the summer, temperatures can soar as high as 113 degrees in the shade, and that's assuming that you can find a tree large enough to stand under. Because before the town passed its tree planting initiative several decades ago, the town's tallest tree was a sculpture made from metal. However, despite the cutthroat conditions, the town still continues to allure people to the outback on the promise of finding the coveted precious opal gemstones. Believe it or not, but back in 1985, both Mel Gibson and Tina Turner decided to head out to Cooper Petty with a team of filmmakers to shoot Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And if you've seen that movie before, then you'll get an idea as to how exactly how remote this place actually is. <laughs> La Rinconada From the most desolate desert communities to the highest inhabited places on Earth, as officially the highest human settlement on Earth, the town of La Rinconada in the Peruvian Andes Mountains resides at over 16,000 feet above sea level. Perched atop the iconic Mount Ananiya in Peru's mountain region, the town is at such a high altitude that it spends most of the year in sub-zero temperatures, besieging the town's inhabitants with some of the most brutal living conditions known to man. On top of that, there is also another huge glaring issue. La Rinconada is home to an unregulated gold mine. I was not, I was say. No es todo esto meaning that pretty much everyone that lives there earns a living in some of the most dangerous working conditions imaginable. Yeah, it's safe to say that La Rinconada is pretty darn hardcore. The town itself is only accessible by braving a precarious mountainside road covered in grass, rocks, dirt, and sheets of ice, making it so perilous that a single journey usually takes several days. As you may imagine, the town isn't exactly known as a tourist hotspot, and there are no hotels or even hospitals located within the settlement. In fact, it's so remote that even the Peruvian government has virtually no influence, essentially making it a territory all of its own. <laughs> Easter Island Okay, while you've definitely heard of this place before, that's no excuse to leave out one of the most incredible remote communities on Earth. As many of you may know, the Easter Island chain draws more than 100,000 annual visitors lured to this mysterious place by its iconic ancient monolithic statues, known as Maui, where around 1,000 of them dot the landscape. Located some 2,200 miles off the coast of Chile, Easter Island, traditionally known as Rapa Nui, takes around 20 hours of travel to reach its shores, most of which is by boat and seaplane. Despite being under constant scrutiny for the past few centuries, most of the history of the island, including the ancient Polynesians who discovered it more than 1,000 years ago, are still shrouded in mystery. What they left behind is one of the most captivating archaeological mysteries of our time, and although there have been a few clues deciphered as to why these giant Maui statues were painstakingly carved in the first place, it remains to be a beautiful and enigmatic puzzle. Whatever the case, the land itself is the definition of untapped beauty, lush but treeless, a fertile carpet of billowing grass grown on long extinct volcanoes. Beautiful. Oymjolkin. From the strangest, the tallest, and now the coldest isolated community on the planet, let's turn your attention toward the remote village of Oymjolkin, located deep within the Arctic Circle of Eastern Siberia. When we say that this place is cold, we mean really, really cold. 
In Russia, the name of the town literally translates to water that doesn't freeze. Put it this way, the town of Omyokin is so cold that in the middle of the town square... Look at that. Look at you that. were doing that for about 10 seconds. There's a statue that commemorates the day in 1924 when the temperature fell to a record 96 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Do you know how cold that is? Yeah, really cold. Located north of the Sea of Okhotsk, Omyokin is officially known as the coldest permanently inhabited place on Earth and was founded back in the mid-1920s during the Soviet expansion when winter reindeer herders discovered a thermal spring that they could use during their migration. As you may imagine, living here is a painstaking occupation all of its own. Pipes freeze, so there's no plumbed toilets. The ground is always frozen, so the local diet is meat and fish. Car engines freeze, so they're kept running almost permanently. Your eyelashes and even your saliva will freeze as soon as you step outside. Even vodka will freeze. Yeah, that should say it all. <laughs> Kerguelen Islands. All right, perhaps we were laying it on a little heavy with the sub-zero coldness of isolated communities in the Arctic because it's not all that bad in the polar regions. Let's take a look at the Kerguelen Islands, a remote island situated in the extreme southern Indian Ocean, used primarily as a research station by scientists surveying the Antarctic continent. Located 2,051 miles away from any semblance of civilization, as you may imagine, there are no native inhabitants on this island, but is technically permanently occupied by 50 to 100 French scientists, engineers, and researchers that rotate their placements throughout the year. These islands are technically made up of a chain, the largest of which goes by the name Desolation Island. Uh, not so cheery, right? Stretching nearly 100 miles long, the highest peak of Desolation Island reaches a towering 6,445 feet, looking out at the 300 lowly satellite islands that make up the chain. The only way to and from the island is by ship, which departs only four times per year and costs around $20,000 per cabin. Yikes, not a great place to be stranded. <laughs> Siwa Oasis. Speaking of being stranded and alone, our next entry on this incredible list of isolation, we've certainly had to turn our gaze toward the one place that you'd be relieved to stumble upon if you were ever stranded in the Egyptian desert. Not like that happens all the time, right? Located in Western Egypt, the Siwa Oasis is located 350 miles southwest of Cairo and is nestled near the Libyan frontier, one of the most arid and inhospitable zones in the Middle East. Thankfully, to make this unrelenting journey possible, the Siwa Oasis stretches out to over six miles and is composed of around 200 life-giving springs. Historically, the oasis has been inhabited by the barber-speaking Sudanic people who live in mud-brick houses located at the front of ancient ruined fortresses. Despite its arid location, the Siwa oasis is extremely fertile and supports thousands of date palms and olive trees, and it's every bit the desert paradise it appears to be. Honest? It's no mirage. The majority of the Siwa oasis is made up of the ruined fortress of Shali, which dates back to the 12th century and was painstakingly built by just 40 men. <laughs> Cape York Peninsula. It's no secret that Australia is a pretty inhabitable place and given the fact that almost 90% of the country's urban territories are situated along the coastline, the country possesses its fair share of intensely isolated communities in its geographical central landmass, also known as the Outback. However, it seems that our next entry, Cape York Peninsula doesn't play entirely by the same set of rules. This large, remote peninsula in the far north of Queensland is about as close to the very tip of Australia that you can get and is considered to be one of the most challenging environments on the continent to explore. However, for those brave enough to have made the perilous and painstaking journey, the rewards are immense. How easy they look or how not easy they look you should always come and check it first. The closest capital city to Cape York Peninsula is a six-hour plane journey away, which requires a complicated switch in cairns. Flying from Sydney will take seven hours, and from Perth, it's a 12-hour bonanza across the Australian continent. For those that call this place home, there's breathtaking waterfalls and a vibrant, untapped ecosystem unlike any other on Earth. Beautiful. Hmm. Chang Hang. Next up, we have the Chang Hang Plateau, 
a grassland territory in northern Tibet that's so remote, most of its land has officially been designated as a national nature reserve. The Changtang is made up of the high-altitude Tibetan plateau in western and northern Tibet, extending all the way to southeastern Ladakh in India. It's also home to the Changpa, a nomadic Tibetan people who call one of the remotest and highest territories on earth their ancestral home. Stretching out across 990 miles, the two largest settlements within the Tibetan Changtang are Wutong Town and Domar Township, two sparsely populated towns that pride themselves on being remote and inaccessible to the rest of the world. Torshan. On their own, the Faroe Islands of the North Atlantic Ocean are one of the remotest territories on Earth, but even remote island territories have to have their own capital city, right? Feast your eyes on Torshan, the official capital of Faroe Islands, an autonomous territory that is equally officially part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Literally meaning Thor's Harbor in Danish, Thorshavn is the largest city on the Faroe Islands. I'm now standing in one of the two beautiful ports of Thorshavn and I'm gonna explore. But at just 66.8 square miles, it's still pretty darn tiny. It's believed that the town's official parliament was founded back in 850 AD, and throughout its history, it served as the focal point for both trade and commerce, vital to the survival and livelihood of the remote Faroe Islands. Amazing! <laughs> Tristan de Cunha All right, while we've seen our fair share of incredibly remote territories on Earth, few of them can compete with the complicated thrill ride history of this next settlement. Let's take a look at Tristan de Cunha, perhaps the most beautiful island at the end of the world. As the world's most remote permanent settlement on an active volcano, the closest nearby settlement to Tristan de Cunha is 1,500 miles away, as the equally inaccessible St. Helena, which also serves as its municipal government. Discovered back in 1506 by Portuguese sailors and named after the expedition leader himself, no one ever expected that this literal volcano would become a far-flung and fully functioning community. But by 1818, the British had claimed the island as their own and set up shop, founding the island's only town, Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. While initially the island was founded for strategic military purposes, over the years the settlement expanded to include a small administrative center as well as a micro-economy based on seafood. After 150 years of near paradise, Edinburgh of the Seven Seas was nearly destroyed during a devastating volcanic eruption in 1961. But just two years later, its handful of citizens returned to rebuild their beloved community. Incredibly, they received their own postcode back in 2005, so things are looking up for this tiny fledgling town. Villa Las Australias While we previously mentioned the Kerguelen Islands of Antarctica, believe it or not, but even that incredibly isolated settlement has its own neighbor. As one of the only two civilization settlements in the desolate lands of frigid Antarctica, Villa Las Australias is made up of just 14 homes, one bank, a small school, one gym, one church, and even its own souvenir shop. Spanish for Stars Town. Eight children have been born here since 1978, and ten people have got married here. Very romantic. Villa Las Estrellas is technically a Chilean civilian settlement and has a tiny population of over 100 during the summer months, and even less once the winter winds begin to blow into town. Believe it or not, and despite the brutal landscape, this place actually enjoys its own tourist season, lending itself as a vital source of income for those that have chosen to call this frozen territory their home. Awesome! <laughs> Supai. And finally, for our last whistle stop tour on this township tapestry of isolation, let's take a look at the tiny village of Supai, a territory that, believe it or not, caused one of the most recognizable natural landmarks on Earth its home. Yet incredibly, the tiny town is located at the bottom of the Havusa Canyon, a side branch of the iconic U.S. landmark, the Grand Canyon, home to the native Havusa Pai tribe that have been living and thriving in the Grand Canyon for at least the past 800 years. Supai is officially perhaps the most isolated village in the United States, and although the nearest road is around 10 miles away, no cars can reach it. The only way in or out is to hike, or take a mule. Amazingly, Supai is the only place in the United States where mail is still carried out by mules. Incredible. Well, there we have it, the 15 most isolated places around the world. What'd you guys think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments section below. 
As always, thanks for sticking around all the way until the end. You've been watching Missing Files. See you next time. Mm-hmm.